<laughs> wow. My grandfather used to say, first of all, good afternoon. I know protocol has been set. My grandfather used to say as a primitive Baptist preacher, he used to say, let everybody that has breath and good sense <laughs> praise the Lord. So if you, if, if you ain't got breath and you'd be crazy, you might not want to say that. But if you got breath <laughs> yes, and good sense, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Of Yeah, good sense, Pastor. <laughs> My father, 1624, Windsor Drive, the richer they're about. Yeah. He always says, when you go out, you represent myself and throw his chapel the best way you know how. All right. You represent God. Yes. yes. But my father, 511 Rogers Avenue in Wilson, North Carolina, said every time you go out before the people, you make sure you represent me and your my family name Amen. to the best of your ability. Right. But I got a father that's bigger than that, and he said, anytime you go out and represent me, that's right. you do it the best that you can. Amen. And you do it to honor me. Amen. So we got fathers that need to teach these babies Amen. in every capacity that it is. Right. Now I need 10 volunteers. I won't stay before you guys long. But I'm happy to be here this morning. Anytime somebody asks me to come speak to young people, I come without a cause, but I come and want to teach them. All right. Not only teach them, but teach the people. Because I don't know whether y'all realize it a lot uh, 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 or not. Uh, we got some tough parents out here. All right now. <laughs> wow. Look, 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 look. I'm, I'm going to come behind your pastor. He's a good brother. But listen, we've got to do better, parents. Mm. All right. All right. I'm going to do a sign ministry today and I'm going to tell you guys some stories. I want you to really follow what I'm saying to you. And I'm going to talk really, really fast. But I need one volunteer to come to me real quick. One volunteer, a young person, a young person. Really, really quick. It doesn't matter. But listen at this, guys. Listen at this. And if you want to follow me, guys, I'm coming out of Mark chapter 8, verse 11. All right. All right. Mark chapter 8. Come across the front. Thank you so much, okay? And just hold that up for me, okay? Mark chapter 8, verse 11. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had arrived, they came and they started to argue with him, testing him. They demanded that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. And when he heard this, he sighed deeply in his spirit and he said, why do these people keep demanding a miraculous sign? Mm. I tell you the truth, right. I would not give this generation such a sign. So he got back into the boat and he left them and he crossed the other side of the lake. And then I'm going to drop down in verse 14 and say, but the disciples had forgotten to bring any food. This is another verse. They had only one loaf of bread with them in the boat as they were crossing to the lake. Jesus warned them, watch out. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. At, at this, they began to argue with each other because they hadn't brought enough bread. Watch this. Jesus knew what they were saying. So he said, why are you arguing? about having no bread. Don't you know or even understand yet? New hope, don't y'all get it yet? All right. Come on with it now. Are your hearts too hard to take it in? You have eyes. Can't you see new hope? What's happening to us? You have ears. Can't you hear new hope? What's happening? Don't you remember anything that I've told new hope? When I fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread, how many baskets of leftovers did you pick up afterwards? Uh -huh. They responded, 12. And when I fed the 4,007 loaves, how many large baskets of leftovers did you pick up? They said, seven. And then Jesus responded, mm -hmm. don't y'all understand yet. Uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you this morning. Lord, thank you just once again for allowing me to come before you, your people, yes, with the Lord. very breath that you've given me to uh -huh. give them something uplifting in the next few minutes. Mm -hmm. Lord, please guide my mind and my speech as I deliver what you've given me to say today. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. New hope. Don't y'all understand it yet. Come on. This sign that I got up right now, and I'm going to go through a list of signs. I got to go really, really quick because I don't want to hold too long. Time. This is God's way. Watch this. And I want to do it through storytelling so the young people can follow us. Right. A preacher out of the country was testing out one of his rich church members one day. And John was a farmer and the preacher asked him, John, if you had 100 pigs, would you give 25 to God? Yes, Pastor, I would. John, if you had 20 pigs, would you give five to God? Absolutely, Pastor. John, if you had two pigs, would you give one to God? 
Preacher, cut that mess out. You know I only have two pigs. As long as we're being hypothetical, we'll be generous. But once God asks us what we're going to do and what we have in our hands, we have a problem. Listen, these children don't belong to us. They belong to God. It's only one way this stuff is going to work. you got to give these babies back to God. We're trying to keep these babies to ourselves. And he says they're mine. Watch this. How many young people that we left in bed this morning? How many grandchildren we left at home because they told us what they wanted to do? There's only one way this is going to work. It's God's way. New hope. Don't miss the signs. Don't miss it. Because we left some grandchildren, some sons and daughters right in the bed, and we hold titles in the church, and we're trying to tell somebody else's child what to do in the church, and we left our own at the house. Here's another story. I need another volunteer real quick, real quick. The quicker y'all move, the quicker I get it. Don't miss the signs. Don't miss the signs. Watch this. Thank you, baby. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, cameraman. Thank you so much. Oh, you all right? Listen, stand beside that gentleman for me. Thank you. And, and could you help? Yeah, just keep pushing down. I like that. Look, we got to take a, just a little walk with Jesus. We got to teach our babies. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. A little boy one day was trying to pick up a rock. And he said, Daddy, it's too heavy. And then he says, then the daddy says, son, you can do it. The boy strained and he tried, but, the, but he said, dad, it's too heavy. The father insisted, son, you can do it. He tried again. He said, dad, it's too heavy. And then he said, son, you're not using all your power and your strength. Uh -huh. And then he said, dad, yes, I am, but it's too heavy. And then he said, son, you got to try again. And then, then he said, dad, why are you continually telling me uh -huh. to use all my strength because it's too heavy? Then the daddy said, I know you're not using all your strength because you haven't asked me yet. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, the reason why we're losing so many babies is just because we're trying to teach them once again. You got to go back to the first time. This is God's way. We're trying to do it our way. Let your will be done. Listen, when we ask Him for His strength, that's when we'll get them back. Uh-huh. Talk back to me if you can. They've got to walk with Jesus. You know what? When our babies sing in the choir, when they do praise dance, when they read scripture and read prayer, are our babies taking this from New Hope back to these schools and middle schools? Come on, We stand and we clap for our babies, and I think it's wonderful. But are we giving this message when they're taking it back to their community in school when all this bullying and stuff is going on? Yeah. Give them back to God. All right. Amen. We can do everything we can, but until these babies get back to God, the babies you left at home, in your bed, that you paying rent for in the house, uh -huh. we left them at home. All right. They've got to walk with Jesus. This is God's way. Yeah. This is God's way. Let me get another volunteer real quick. And watch this. Salvation. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Don't miss the signs. Come on, baby. You know what I tell young people? Move with a purse. <laughs> I teach young people. See, in order for you to get a job, we, we, we can. <laughs> and then we wonder why we can't hold jobs because we don't move with a purpose, That's military it. man. If you go to the military, they're looking at your steps. If you go work for UPS, they're watching you when you get out of the car to get the job, and then they already made an assessment that you don't have a job because you got out of the car walking too slow. That's right. That's right. Move with a purpose. Go ahead. That's right. You're doing it. Salvation ahead. Don't miss the signs. Don't miss the signs. People want salvation, but don't want to put in the time to be strong disciples of Christ. Watch this, pal. You can keep your 200 or whatever number of members you got at New Hope, but yeah. give me five disciples. Yeah. You need somebody to do the work. Yeah. Yeah. We need somebody to do the work. Yeah. We're treating church like it's a golf club or something. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your members, Pastor. That's right. Give me three people that's going to work for the community. Give me three people that's going to give somebody some uplift and not tear people down. Yeah. I'm not just a member of Thorns Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. I'm a disciple. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
We audit Jesus on Sundays. We want to tell Jesus what to do. When Jesus is already there waiting for us to get there. Lord, go to the stop by the hospital. You go to the hospital. Lord, stop by the sick and the and You go to see the sick and the He's already waiting on us. Lord, go out of your dad's home and fill up the He's already there. He's waiting to see if we're going to get there. We're too busy trying to tell him what to do. Are you a church member or are you a disciple? Salvation ahead. This is where it's at. Right. Don't miss the signs, new hope. Don't miss them. Watch this. Another, another volunteer. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Somebody move with a purse. <laughs> Thank you, baby. All you gotta do is teach them and demand it. Demand it. Commitment. How many of us are committed? Watch this. You cannot mix unleaded and diesel fuel in the same tank. Oh, you ain't going no more. Keep on talking, man. Watch this. The moment you introduce diesel and unleaded together in the same tank, the engine will mess up. You got to know that. I'm not a mechanic. But I have done it before. Just because it looks like gas doesn't mean it's going to help you. What we do as Christians is if we come to church to get unleaded, then on Monday through, through Saturday, we let the world get involved. They give us diesel fuel. And then we chug along until we fall up in a new hope on Sunday morning. This is what's happening to our young people around the world. And you know why? They watch us grown, grown folk. People talk about bullies. You know grown folks some of the biggest bullies in the world? All right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We rip each other when you get on the phone driving in the car coming from church. We ripping the church member and the child back in the back seat listening to everything you're saying. And then on Monday morning and Friday, we want to go out to the principal and fuss at the principal and the child getting booed. You doing it right in front of the child. You can't mix unleaded and diesel together. You can't mix new hope. Missionary Baptist Church in the world together. Come on. If you do it, you gotta be a strong enough disciple, oh, not a church member, yeah. to handle that. Uh -huh. Amen. Say so. How many Say members so. do you got, Pastor? Say so. So, so. Versus disciples. Yeah, that's right. Good question. All right. Good question. I need another volunteer. Yeah, give us some disciples. How many of us are committed? Don't miss the signs. Don't miss the signs. Thank you, baby. I like that. Young man move with a purpose. I like that. I gave you the wrong one. I'm so sorry. Let me give you this one. Thank you, young man. Appreciate you. Watch this. What directions are our babies going in? All right. All right. It scares us all sometimes when we see what direction our children are going in. Amen. It scares me. It puts fear in my heart because that's why I push the way that I do. I do this because I got a father, and not only one, the father that's on high, but my daddy, my earthly daddy, then my pastor. So we push. Watch this. There's a story a little bit. Watch this, young people. You guys in here. How many don't like rules? <laughs> Watch this. A lot of times I don't like rules sometimes. Come on. Listen, we got to teach them. Watch this. If the speed limit is 55 and you're late going to New Hope Baptist Church, Missionary Baptist Church, and you want to go 62, are you violating the rules? So how many of us in here don't like rules? Come on, talk back to me if you can. We've got to be real with these children. So when I ask a question. You can't fake it because one thing I do know is this. I do know this. Children can smell if you're telling the truth or not. So let's be real in our houses. Let's be real. This part of the issue that we're having across America, like, cause let me tell you this. If I messed it up in the past, I need to tell this young brother that I messed it up. Amen. There was a time this old wretched man that I was, all, I couldn't stand up here and talk to you guys. Uh -huh. So we can't walk in here and every time you answer the phone, and you got to say, how you doing, brother? I'm too blessed to be, look, listen, I'm just saying, how you doing? <laughs> listen, you've got to show these brothers and these young sisters that once, one time, I won't always hear. That's right. That's right. I won't always hear. Right. Right. You've got to share the story. You've got to share the story. Right. They don't know the story if we don't tell them the story. Right. If, if, if you don't have it, listen, watch this. 
Our young people just think it's always been this way. You had a whole bunch of shoes in the closet, a whole bunch of clothes in the closet. You open the refrigerator, it's full of, full of stuff to eat. Guess what? It ain't always been that way. You got to tell them the story. The direction. Watch this. There was a story of a little boy who wanted to tell his mother, wanted to tell his mother to pay him for all the services he rented at home. And he left with a note. How many of you young people got chores at home? Watch this and make your bed. Anybody? Thank you, baby. Watch this. This young boy said, for washing the dishes, you owe me a dollar. For cleaning my room, you owe me a dollar. For hanging up my clothes, you owe me one dollar. For mowing the lawn, you owe me a dollar. He said, mama, you owe me, so you better pay him. He printed a bill to her total and four dollars and he gave it to her. The mother came home, she put the four dollars up on the kitchen table with a note of her own and she said this. For carrying you nine months and being sick as a dog, I didn't charge you a dime. For staying up all night, night after night when you were sick, I didn't charge you a dime. She said for working overtime so you can wear those expensive shoes on your feet and those expensive clothes, I didn't charge you not a dime. For entertaining your friend when you wanted to bring him over without a notice and I was tired, I didn't charge you a dime. Sign your mother who loves you so much. Total and zero. Young people, after reading the note, the young man realized that he had lost sight of the goodness of his mom. Right. He had turned up a love relationship into a business deal. And so many of us parents, mm. whoo, talk Come back on, to me if you can. My son is not my friend. That's right. I implore to be raising him as a man and as a father. If he don't like me, I've done my job. My son, listen, this is too costly to lose these babies. You guys see it across America. Yeah. And we're so busy trying to be that friend that we're losing these babies. That's My right. son is 24, and if he come to me, I've got to lead him the right way. Yeah. If that means you got to stay mad with me three months, it's okay because daddy has done his job. <laughs> and I give him that, yeah. no charge. <laughs> he gets all of that, no charge. Yes, and watch this. Here's the thing: you guys ever watch the 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 the, the Ge National Geographic? Uh -huh. Listen, I was watching that one day. And listen, this is how this is how the devil is getting our babies. Watch this: the salmon sometimes during breeding season they they swim upstream. You guys seen this? Yeah. Right. So the salmon swims backwards. This is the sign that I want you to see. And, and, and this guy trust in the law with all the other guys. Know the scripture. Watch this. Look, watch. The salmon swims back is upstream. That's right. Watch this. So guess who's upstream? The bears have figured it out. The bears used to, they used to stand downstream and wait for the salmon. But guess what? The salmon, they mate back upstream. So guess what the bears do? They go upstream. They wait for them. This is what the devil is doing to our babies. Because if we don't feed them in the right direction, the devil backs up. And we wait for them. Not only do the bears go upstream, upstream the eagles, when the bears eat the, eat the eggs out, he discard them, and then the eagles, they stand and they watch and they pick up the leftovers. Wow. Listen, we got people that want to prey on our children. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Who's going to stand in the gap? Hmm. You see, when mama and daddy is not here for him, I stand in the way. Yeah. I step in. Yeah. I don't care what you say. You say, well, you ain't his mama. Let me, let me back Come up on now. This. If a child says to me, you're not my mama or my daddy, I know y'all ain't raised them right. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I could not say that to anybody. My grandmother, my mama would knock my teeth out my mouth. If a grown person says, especially in the church, especially in the Baptist church, if a grown person says something to you, you, you can, boy, you better, you better stand there and take it. Yeah. So watch this. So we buy all these young people. We send our young people to school with a $200 pair of shoes on. With a $50 pair of jeans. You guys do the math. So now I'm up to $250. We send them to school with a polo shirt on it's $60, and now I'm up to what, $310. Then if they got to wear a jacket, that's $100, and now I'm up to $410. We send now babies, and we say, trust in the Lord. We send them to school wearing a $300, $400 outfit, and they can't read and write. Something is wrong. Yeah. So they got a $300 outfit on with a 10 cent brain. Something is wrong. Yeah. You hope. 
talking right now. Amen. Mm. Yeah. New hope, don't y'all get it yet. This is what Jesus said. Don't you get it yet. Don't miss the signs. Another young person, I'm coming to a close. Come here, baby. Come here. Can you hold the sign for me? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I like that. Young man popped up. I like that. If you get too tired, guys, I could just stand it on the stick. So I, if you get too tired, okay, watch this. We've got to yield to God. We've got to yield to God. Whatever he's telling us, we've got to understand it. We've got to take heed. Watch this. A man slid over the side of a cliff and he was able to grab a branch at the last second. He hung dangling over the cliff. Hundreds of feet above the ground. And he screamed out a loud voice, help me, somebody, help me. Yeah. A voice came out of the sky and, and, and said, do you believe I can help you? The man responded, yes, I believe. Please, somebody help me. Mm -hmm. Do you believe I have the power to help you? Uh -huh. Yes, I believe you have the power to help me. Do you believe I love you enough to help you? Yes, I know you love me enough. Please, just help me and stop talking to me. <laughs> All right now. Because you believe, I will help you. Now let it go. The man said in a brief silence, the man said, Is there anybody up there that can help me other than this guy? Listen, watch this. Lord be trying to tell us something and we don't yield to what he's trying to tell us. All right now. Let me tell you what he's trying to tell us, especially our teenagers. Listen. I'm not going to hide my son's car behind my house because he didn't pay the, pay the, the car note on it. Right. Talk back to me. Come on now. Yes, sir. I'm not going to hide drugs and guns in my house that I pay rent for. That's right. And put my home in jeopardy because this is my son. All right, man. You better yield to the Lord and what he's telling us because we're missing the sign. Uh -huh. mm. Some stuff we just got to say is wrong. All right, It's wrong and it's yes, wrong. This is how we help our young people. We've got to yield to what God's telling us. Mm. With me doing about what is right and what God is telling me, if he's telling me to let it go, then he's got something in the best interest of my son. Yes, sir. But if I want to protect my son because he's giving me 50 or $60 on the rent that Come he's on, doing man. some illegal stuff, I'm totally wrong and I'm not yielding to God. All right, now. Amen. Talk back to me if you can. Yes, sir. Amen. New hope. You're talking right. You're talking right. Don't you get it yet. Don't you get it. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. Watch this. Can some? Can y'all hold this one? This may be too big for these. For these. Yeah. Thank you, baby. Yeah, it's a big. But this. This is a heavy hitter. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Do unto others. Can y'all read it back to me? Yes. This is the golden rule. How dare me look at my sister and point out that little stick in her eye? When I got two two by fours in my eye. Let me say that again. How dare me talk about what's going on in her house when my house is told T-O-E. T-O-E. When my house is towed up from the floor up. Listen, get your own business straight first before you come to here. This is where we stand. So watch this. One day a young girl asked her mom, she said, Mama, why do you have so much gray hair? Her mother looked at her daughter sternly and said, every gray hair is representative of a time you were disobedient to me. I have gray hair because you were rebellious. The girl uh, looked at her, her mom, she said, well, Mama, are you the reason Grandma got so much gray hair? <laughs> Parents, be careful of how you raise and show in front of your babies. Because your mama got a story too. We gotta raise them right and do it the right way. Come on, come on, real quick. Hey, real quick, real quick. That's fine. This is too heavy for my baby. Can you get this for me? Y'all bump down for me. I'm almost done, almost done. Ah, uh, stop sign. You know, people used to run the stop sign when I used to be working. I used to be like, what in the world? I know people saw this stop sign. But guess what? There's consequences when you run a stop sign. Amen. There's consequences when you don't do what you asked accordingly in the church house because you ran the stop sign. Right. There's consequences when you don't follow the directions of your pastoral staff. Yeah. You don't ran the stop sign. Right. When you run the stop sign out in the world, you get hurt. Watch this. You cannot be free without restrictions. A fish is not free to roam in the jungle. Alright. Okay. Y'all got to get that later. It wasn't made for that. 
A lion is not free to live in the ocean. He wasn't made for that. You got to get it. Because it wasn't made for that. Freedom is like having the benefits secured to you that you were created to receive. Watch this. You know how I look at law enforcement and bad guys that break, break the rules? See, in law enforcement, and we talk about this in law enforcement. I look at law enforcement like a football game. You ever guys watch football? It's a football field. Well, if I'm guarding the bad guy and I'm the police, guess what? He has no restrictions. So he runs on the field and he runs all in the stands with y'all. Now I'm, I'm just stuck. I'm, I'm looking at him running the stands and I'm like, man, because why? I got restrict, restrictions as, the, as police. I got restrictions. Mm -hmm. So now y'all got the bad guy running all in the stands with y'all. He running all down. So now I'm, I'm staying in bounds. And now I get to the 10. He gets back in at the 10 and he scores a touchdown. Why? Because I had restrictions. Mm -hmm. In the church, we've got to be a light for the world. Right. We got restrictions. Yes, man, y'all should be. Hey, Mr. Pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Yes, sir. We got restrictions. Yes, Listen, watch this. We get on our young boys so much for wearing a pants sagging down, mm. and we get upset. Mm. And, and, and you see our young brothers now, they don't even get a full haircut. They just shave the side and let the rest of them grow how they want to go. Talk back to me if you can. Y'all act like I'm the only one seeing this stuff. But watch this. When we get on our young boys, what about our young girls wearing pajama pants to the grocery store? Yeah. And then, now, 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 and then the little bag, that's a bonnet, what they call it, wear the bag on top. And I'm talking to you as a man. Yeah. And then we wear the slippers to the pajama store. But guess what? If it's unacceptable for our boys to wear their pants hanging down, then it's got to be unacceptable for our, our girls wearing pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> we got to stop this mess. It's madness. We got to stop it. Don't miss the signs, New Hope. Don't miss the signs. I'm almost finished. I need another baby real quick. Real quick. That's fine. She can hold it. I can't go fuss with the baby. Look, I ain't gonna. All right, come on, baby. I ain't gonna fuss with the baby. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Appreciate you. Okay, I love it. Come on, on this side. Hey, I love it. Yeah. I love it. This. Is, I got one more sign after this, guys, and I'm done. I hope this has been helpful to you guys. Watch this. Watch out for falling rocks. You ever meet these people around church or outside of church? Just rock around the world, and every time you see them, they're negative. Every time you see them come through the door, you say, oh, Lord, here she go. <laughs> the negative. Watch out for falling rocks. Mm -hmm. I am designed to be a blessing to people, oh, yeah. to tear down barriers, and to build bridges. Right. That's how we're designed. Right. But if every time you're coming around, you're the most negative thing in the world, we've got a problem. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Watch out for falling rocks. Some people you've got to cut loose. Many churches in need of every what every football team has is called cheerleaders. What New Hope need are cheerleaders. That's what we need. The job of a cheerleader is to tell everybody we're going to make it. How many of you told somebody this week, man, we're going to make it, sister? Hmm. Brother, we're going to make it. Watch this. No matter how bad things look on the scoreboard, there's still hope. And I say this all the time. I can live without my wife. I can live without my mother-in-law. I can live without, without my, my wife's aunt. And I can live without my uncle. But guess what? I can't live one second without hope. Right. See, because when I lose hope, I've lost them. Amen. When I lose hope in myself, if we lose hope in this generation, we're lost. Oh, yeah. That baby is crying in this church. Yeah. And let me tell you, New Hope, that baby, that's, the most, that, that's, a, that's a sign from God. And he's telling New Hope something. When you hear that baby's cry, that's his call. When you don't hear a baby cry in your church, your church is dying. Mm. 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 When you don't have these babies, keep crying. When you don't have these babies in your church, on Sunday morning, the babies that you left in your house that you pay rent for, you killing your church. So let them cry. Yes, sir. Because yes, it's a sir. gift from God. Yeah, yeah. Good sign. We need cheerleaders, New Hope. Yeah. We need cheerleaders to encourage these young people. That's right. All right. They need cheerleaders. And see, sometimes what a cheerleader does, the cheerleader cheer them 
whether they're right or whether they're wrong. So we're there to make sure they get it right and to correct the wrong. See, because they don't need you when they're doing it right. All right now. Not all the time, because they yeah. know they're doing it right. But when they step out of bounds, mm. how many is going to correct them and say, don't condemn them, but lift them up? All right now. And help them get it right. That's right. That's right. So we need tear leaders in the yes, church. Sir. And so many times in the church where we keep, we're knocking people down before they get in the door. Yeah. We fish for them and let new hope clean them up. Let Jesus clean them up. Mm -hmm. That last sign, real quick, guys, real quick. This is my last sign, and I'll be done with you guys. But it's getting some rest. Don't miss the sign. Thank you, baby. Y'all got some beautiful little babies, too. Amen. Thank you. Come on over here, baby. Listen at this. At the end of the day, and I share it with my son, and I share it with all the young people. Don't you guys, when you go home, you want peace at your house? Amen. If you can't have peace at your house, Something is wrong, especially when you're paying the rent in the morning. But this is where we're at with our young people. We go home and they're running the house. We're letting babies like this dictate what we watch on TV. I think not. We're letting our teenage sons and daughters dictate how we operate in our own home. Because we feel like we don't have the strength. You remember the other sign that we said, listen, the reason why you ain't got the strength because you ain't asked. All right. All right, now. That's right. But when I go home, I want rest. I want peace. When I come to New Hope or Thorns Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, I want peace. I don't want to see my sister knowing I got to argue with her to get through the service. Talk back to me. Y'all like you just did. You know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, sir. We've got to be leaders. Oh, and the pastor said, listen, we come to church Sunday after Sunday. It looked like we were in the bite me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to come around people like that? I'm only joking, though. We've got to be chilling as a leader. That's right. So these babies out here looking at the pastors looking, he's looking at people looking like they're just mad with everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I come to a close. Aye, aye. An old man asked a young boy, what are you doing with your life, young people? What are you doing with your life? Amen. The young boy replied, I'm going to college and I'm going to get me a business degree. That's what he said. Oh, then I'm going up to New York and I'm going to work on Wall Street, become a broker, and then become a millionaire. Oh uh -huh. man said, okay, then what? This is what I mean, this is so amazing because I asked my son this. The boy continued, then I'm going to buy myself a fine house and I'm gonna make it and retire so I can enjoy a good life. Okay. Then what? And then after that I'm going to party, relax, and enjoy my grandkids. Then the man said, okay, then what? He said, well, I guess after that, I'm going I'm to die. And that's how young people really thought, I'm just going to die. I'm going to die. So the old man smiled, and he said, look, 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 little boys, and he said this. For all of his life, no matter how we live our lives, and no matter how you feel it with them, we will all die and need a place to, place to lay our heads at the end of the day. Amen. You know, I love all these young people right here. I know a few of them. At the end of the day, we are designed to protect their interests. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. Yes, sir. How many of us, when we walk through those doors, we don't give them an encouraging word? Amen. Here's what I tell young people. I need all these young people, there's 10 of them, to be better than everybody in this building. That's right. Amen. Amen. You've got to expect for greatness. This is greatness for New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Yes, sir. If you don't want greatness over this, you need to pack up and go walk out the door. Right. Right. Because this is the next generation. Amen. Amen. This is greatness. Yes, sir. So we uplift and we don't turn down. As I close, watch this. And this is madness. We feed into madness. Listen at this. An old man and a young boy are walking with a donkey. And you got to follow this real quick. And I'm closing because you guys have been standing for too long. Somebody saw them making their way along the road and said this. Look at that waist. The old man and the boy were walking with the donkey and not using the donkey for what it was used for. The old man thought that the passerby had a point, so the old man got up on the donkey and rolled while the young boy led the donkey. Uh -huh. Someone else along the way saw the threesome and said, look at that. 
The old man making the little boy walk while he ride the donkey. The old man thought that for a second the pastor by had a point, so he said, listen, the young boy got up on the donkey and then the old man led. A little bit down the road, they passed a third person. That person said, look at that young boy making the old man ride the donkey. <laughs> Yet again, the old man thought, well, they got a point. The next person who saw them looked at disbelief at the donkey was riding the old man's back. <laughs> All I'm trying to tell you, New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, let's do what the Lord say do because at the end of the day, we all 